Happy New Year to everyone, and welcome back to Time Out with the Sports Doctor podcast. Thank you for continuing to listen. Uh, thank you for continuing to be a part of this community. And at the beginning of the year, I feel this is a good time to reintroduce myself to many and to introduce myself to some. I realize that at the beginning of the year, many people are starting new resolutions or starting new plans, and hopefully this podcast is one of them. So I would like to introduce myself to all the new listeners. I'm Dr. Derek Burgess. I'm entering now into my third year of podcasting. Not that actually that the podcast has been out, but I say my third year of podcasting because beginning of 2021 is when I started to move on the vision of the podcast. That's when I enrolled in a course uh, with Dr. Nee Darko, which was labeled 10 Weeks to Podcasting. Not sure if he still has that course or not, but he basically walked me through the podcasting process over about three months prior to my launch date. And then Father's Day of 2021 is when we launched. And here we are um, in 2024, and we're still going and actually getting stronger. So that's a blessing. And that's simply because of the community that we've been able to build. So just about me, uh, born and raised Muscle Shoals, Alabama. I am a husband, I'm a father, I'm a mentor, I'm a coach, <laughs> I'm orthopedic surgeon, as you know, and I also a podcaster, right? So I get to do this. It's almost like it's a release for me as an outlet to be able to express some of my thoughts, but it's also an outlet to be able to connect with other forward thinking individuals. Um, who do we have on this show? We have other physicians, other orthopedic surgeons, but physicians of all sorts. Uh, we have business people, entrepreneurs, athletes, you name it. You'll pretty much be able to find a, an episode probably with them on the on this show. So we're able to bring together people from all walks of life uh, with the common things of strengthening your mindset uh, to help you grow your assets and help you to find what success means to you, as well as to give you tools uh, to help you achieve success. So we like to say that this is where life, sports, and medicine intersect. And it is truly a reflection of my life, of my life lessons, and my interactions that I have on a daily basis. And being able to connect with people has been a very valuable resource of this podcast, um, something that I didn't really even envision when I started this. So as I mentioned, being able to uh, be here is a blessing. And I really enjoy being able to share this time with you, uh, being able to share my story, because we all have a story. And many stories go untold, but we all have a story. And this platform is an area, a safe space, so to speak, where you can share your story and where you, everyone has a different way that they got to where they are. And some people easier than others, but I like to get into the backstory. I really like to talk, tell stories of people who had to overcome adversity to achieve success because success is different for everyone. And sometimes for some people, they've never seen it before. They might have never had a role model, a parent, or anyone that they've been exposed to, but they have a dream. So this podcast is to hopefully introduce you to someone who's done what you want to do. And this can serve as a, a form of a mentorship to you. So I love to share episodes when I've been interviewed by other people because I feel that that is the best way to introduce myself to my audience. And one thing that I've been able to do is when I do interviews, I love to be asked questions. I don't like to prepare for them. I like people to ask me questions because it allows me to really reflect over my life and to kind of piece things together. And the more that you do that, I feel that it helps me understand myself better and help me appreciate my journey even more uh, because there's a lot of pitfalls along the way, um, a lot of obstacles that I had to overcome to get to where I am now. And I feel that it's important for you to know that because many times when the first failure or first obstacle is presented, many people will shy away from it. But in order to achieve success for your life or to achieve a goal, you're going to have to push through some adversity. So that's what we're doing today. I would like to share with you an interview that I did on It's My Time podcast. 
Um, I did it several months back. So some things might be a little irrelevant, but I go through my life story from how I chose to be a doctor, how I chose to be a podcaster. I balance my life with my career as well as this podcasting uh, journey that we're on. So hopefully you enjoy this episode. And I want you to all take some time. I did this last week. I actually sat down with my phone and flipped through pictures of 2023. And it's amazing how many things that you do in a year that just kind of slip off your memory or just kind of slip off the grid. So that alone allowed me to really appreciate how much I went through and how much I achieved in a calendar year. Because many times we look back and we're going to think about probably the bad things that happened or the, the shortcomings that we had. But I can guarantee you, you achieved a lot more than you thought you did in the last year. And whatever you have set forth as a goal or a resolution or whatever you like to call it, I wish you the best. And hopefully being a part of this community will help you achieve your goals for 2024. So now let's get into this episode. Hi, welcome to the podcast, Dr. Burgess. Hey, thank you for having me. To introduce you to the audience, who do you say you are? How did you become a doctor? You know, the road to being a doctor, it's a long road. I started off in probably high school with the thought of being a doctor, uh, but the requirements to become a doctor required me to go to undergraduate for four years and then medical school for four years. And that's when you officially become a doctor. But in order to practice medicine in the United States, you have to finish a residency. Um, so I did a five-year residency in orthopedic surgery, and that's where you learn the art of being a surgeon. And then it, I did one additional year of training to become a sports medicine physician. So a lot of training all in all. It was about 15 years of training. I guess what sparked your interest in high school to say, I, I want to be a doctor? Because I, I guess you hear kids say that, like doctor, firefighter, police officer, but then like not many have a chance to follow through on it or decide to follow through once the going gets tough. Yeah, so, you know, at first, I always liked math and science, and I had a family physician, Dr. Wayne Stanley, that allowed me to shadow him, and he actually mentored me and a, a small group of students, of high school students, about careers in medicine so we could understand what it is to be a doctor. I had an unfortunate injury during my football career in high school that allowed me to have, well, that I had to see an orthopedic surgeon for that injury. Mm -hmm. And I expressed interest at that time that I was interested in medicine and Dr. John Young, who later became a mentor of mine, welcomed me into his practice to actually see what he does day in and day out to go into the operating room with him, uh, which gave me a real life view of what it is to be an orthopedic surgeon. So those relationships, plus many relationships along the way, uh, great mentors helped me achieve, you know, what, what could have just been a dream. Awesome. And with all the 15 years of training now, like how long have you been able to actually practice on your own? So I'm going into now my 10th year of being an orthopedic surgeon. It's a long career. <laughs> so it's, it's a long career just to get started. Uh, so, you know, it's one of the few careers that we talk about delayed gratification many times because you're you're typically in your early 30s before you get your first real job and then you know, if you work another 30 year career, most of your friends are already retired. So that's one thing, you know, you see people that you grow up with start to have families start to their careers and they're taking vacations and you're studying and just trying to get there. Yeah, that makes sense. And for me, I guess to introduce myself to you, I, I studied civil engineering. So I got a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. Now I'm, I'm studying soils in that one of the five disciplines of civil engineering and it'll be 10 years come December just practicing this and doing podcasting on the side but learning to really have a mastery of it and it, it's weird like starting a new job within the last two years but still being in the same vein it feels like I'm actually starting in my career for myself sure sure and that feeling can be very uncomfortable, you know, just starting in a new surrounding, even though you're still in the same profession. Mm -hmm. But that's one way that you continue to grow, I feel. Yeah, for sure. And to your point, I, I think it makes sense to me why I see more doctors that are older, because everyone's 
like constantly having this thought of like, oh, I'm going to retire, retire, retire. And I think someone like my brother shared with uh, me and, and I think my siblings are, there's three of us boys. And he, he shared it between the three of us that there's something to be said about not really putting a retirement date on and just continuing to work in something and finding the enjoyment in your work, because then it, it keeps you fresh to your point. It's that relearning and allowing yourself to recreate it allows you to actually develop as a person to where you're not looking for that end goal. When it comes, it comes, but you're not like, okay, I retired six months, you pass away because it was like, you finally reached the pinnacle of what you thought you would reach. Yeah. I think many times your career evolves and it changes the, you know, as you get closer to that finish line, things change. And you're, I think there's going to be many different phases to my career um, there's going to be, you know, parts where it's heavy into the operative part of orthopedics, but then, you know, you can transition to a teaching phase or to another phase. So I'm interested to just see what the career is because it's different from when you're starting, you have one thing in mind, but as you go along the training process and go along jobs and interviews, it really evolves right in front of your face day to day. That's awesome. And during this process, have you changed like locations or career tracks within or being a surgeon? Yeah. So similar to what you were saying, you know, I'm recent, I'm about two months on a new job. So mm. at a large teaching institution, which is completely different from the community practice that I had before. So the patient care aspect is very similar. However, the work dynamics are completely different. So, you know, and then you have to learn new relationships or form new relationships and learn new leadership and different things of that nature. So it always keeps you on your toes. How's your bedside manner? <laughs> you know, that's one thing that I take pride in is really trying to relate to the patient and really, you know, because it's different when it's one thing to be a provider Mm -hmm. But if you can put yourself in a patient's shoes, I feel like that gives a whole different vibe because, you know, it's it's tough to be a patient and nobody typically chooses to be an orthopedic patient, mm -hmm. especially not in the trauma world or, you know, in the sports medicine world where your your career could be altered by an injury. And, you, you know, really many people want to skip the steps of being injured and just mm -hmm. get back to being well and back to their what they love to do. I guess what what's something of solace that you you give a patient when they they first come in or or they just feel like their life's over and they don't know if they're ever going to be the same again. Yeah, so one thing I try to do is allow the patient to understand, look, I understand. I've been an athlete, you know, I know how bad you want to continue with your career and just really acceptance of the fact that we have this injury now. We can get through this injury. However, I want you to just accept that you're injured and know that I have your back. I want the best for you. Um, and really just take some time to really accept it, whether it's crying, screaming, yelling, grieving, whatever it needs to be. Let's get that behind us and then let's meet back up so we can start the road to recovery. That's awesome. I like that. It's almost like you're a therapist for them in a way, or, or you're really that guide and a coach in the operation room and the hospital. Yeah, no, psychology definitely is a, a large part of what I do, especially for injured athletes. Was that something you knew coming in or it, yet even considered would be a part of being a doctor? Not really. Um, that's something that you really learn as you evolve in the practice of medicine. Mm, I like it. Because you spend so much time during the actual formal training of just learning facts and learning techniques. Mm. Um, but the personal part about it is something that you really evolve with. And that's why they call it the practice of medicine, I feel. That makes sense. And it, I guess it's something to be said about having those soft transferable skills, whether it's in having a conversation like this or having a conversation where you're hands-on in a different way and having to just problem solve differently. Yeah, no, definitely. You got to be able to adjust and got to be able to be fluid and, you know, Every day is not going to be someone's best day, but you have to be as a provider there and be strong for them, even when they might not be able to be strong for themselves. I'm curious, how did you make time to have a family life or to even form a family as you're going through the process of like, okay, I'm going to become a doctor and like, this is the track that I want to take? Yeah, I think one thing you learn about on this long track is that life goes on 
you see people around you get married early. You see people around you have children. And we have to many times put that on the side as we go through training. Mm -hmm. um, but you learn to prioritize. You learn to allot time for things that are important. Because if you, this career could overtake your life, truthfully. And if you, if you allow it to. So you have to learn time management skills. I felt that some of the people that were the most focused during my training were the people that had family and kids because you knew that you had a lot of time to get your studying done or to get whatever outside tasks because when you walk through the door, your children are very demanding of your time and I wanted to be present. So you have to learn to adjust to that. And that's something you've been able to do. Yeah. I mean, I have a family with three kids, so wow. um, I do my best. I'm not always present for everything, but they know that if I have the ability to be there, that I'm trying to be at whatever activities that they have. That's awesome. And I, like I'd mentioned earlier, how we, how I came to learn of you was through a mutual friend, Jonathan Jones, and trying to get podcasters to cross pollinate and just speak to one another and seeing what each one's up to. So how did you get into podcasting? If you're enjoying this episode, don't wait to the end to share it. Share it now. Share this with a friend or a colleague that you think might find value in this information. And then also make sure that you click and leave us a five-star review and give us feedback because we really value your feedback and your input. Now back to the episode. Early in the pandemic, 2020, you know, it's something that I've been thinking about. I love mentoring. I love talking to people and having discussions about career and life. I try to do that with my patients as well, but I'm really in a confined time slot where I have to make a diagnosis, treat the patient. So mentoring is something that I try to squeeze in, but I don't have a lot of time. And I found that I was having these same conversations about career development, about uh, success, about financial literacy. And I was, I wanted to be able to have a, a larger platform to do that. And with COVID, one of the first podcast episodes that I had was actually um, a COVID-19 town hall meeting, so to speak, where I invited other physicians and we were able to share uh, meaningful information to the community uh, from a trusted source. So that really got my fire kind of going. Um, I was invited to be in a podcast competition and I didn't even know what a trailer was at that point but I threw it out there and I actually made it as a finalist in that so it allowed me it gave me confidence a small victory to know that it was something that I could do um, and I just took it from there and enrolled in a course uh, Jonathan Jones as you mentioned was one of my podcast mentors and you know here we are two years later that's awesome it's like taking the initiative with what you had at hand and being able to make something of that Yes, I had no formal training <laughs> in <laughs> communications, you know, podcasting, radio, anything like that. It's just something that I took the initiative and went went towards the goal. Gotcha. I guess what what have you enjoyed about it so far and, and like what's something you've kind of played with? Sure. So I'd say probably the thing that I've enjoyed the most is connection with people and collaboration with people, you know, that you never would have known exists like yourself in this podcast space. So I think that that's kind of the hidden jewel of podcasting. I like it. Yeah. People for sure are very interesting. And yeah. it's like you can talk to anyone for maybe five minutes and they'll open your mind up to something you didn't even know was was real. Sure. And that's one thing I say about podcasts. I feel that I can learn from anyone if you open your mind up to learn, you know, no matter if they're an athlete, a physician, an entrepreneur, a lawyer, whatever, I feel that I can learn something from each person. I like it. And with your logo, I, I, I like, how'd you come up with it? Ah, so that was part of my training course that we had to come up with a logo. It was life sports and medicine just kind of mm -hmm. came to me. I did a lot of brainstorming. And as you can see, my logo is a physician uh, wearing a referee's outfit, um, standing on a football. So that I felt that that kind of came together. It just came to me in the middle of the night, to be honest. Yeah. I like, and you're like, time out. Time yeah, out. yeah, yeah, right. And I'm signaling time out. So there you go. Because this is not about medicine. That's why I think the time out piece is so big. I am an orthopedic surgeon, mm -hmm. but so much more than that. And it, it took a while to really realize at first, you know, 
going to work and people say, Hey, I heard you had a podcast. I'm like, yeah, I got a podcast. <laughs> no, just don't tell anybody. But uh, because it takes a while to be comfortable, number one, with hearing your voice and allowing yeah. people to share in your thoughts with people. So I wanted the podcast to grow, but I didn't even really want po- people to know that I was a podcaster. And it sounded almost like a fraud to say I'm a podcaster. Yeah, I'm a mm-hmm. physician, but I'm a podcaster as well. So it evolves over time with really being comfortable in your own skin and knowing mm-hmm. that what you're doing, you know, you're trying to benefit other people through it and, yeah. you know, just really going from there. That's awesome. Yeah, I'd, I definitely identify with that because for me, I, I started my podcast months before the pandemic in 2019 and I traveled over to Puerto Rico for a job with um, FEMA as like kind of support and mm-hmm. they have this orientation class where you get in and everybody's like oh share something interesting about you and I was like I have a podcast and people are like oh you got a podcast you got a podcast and it's like what's it about what's it about and I'm like yeah. I don't want to say right. <laughs> it's right. like just yeah. like that instant shock of like oh crap I put it to be public but now it's public and then like I don't know how I feel about that and I think part of that the shock of you know just putting it into the universe and you know it's not perfect. You know that that you made mistakes, and that's one thing. A lot of people that I even train with in the podcast group focus so much on everything being perfect that you get paralyzed and not able to release it. And you keep pushing back the release date, yeah. or you you know you have this interview and oh he said uh, I used to try to chase down every uh and every you know pause and trying to make it sound perfect, but that can be exhausting as well. Now my editing yeah. is minimal. Mm-hmm. Uh, because and I, you know the fear of people doing lives but i think it's liberating in a in a sense because once it's live it's out there right no matter how many mistakes you made it's out there and you're able to just do it and move on to the next thing and that's one thing that podcasting's really taught me sometimes you know i've had the microphone sitting right in front of me and not even have it plugged into the computer mm-hmm. and a remote you know microphone was recording yeah. So the quality might not be the greatest, but the content's still there. So you just learn to that mistakes are going to happen. You try to not allow them to happen more than once and just move on. Yeah. Those are, I mean, those are great life lessons because it's like, to your point and doing what you do, you, there's no redo. There's no like reset button. They're like, oh, let's, let's run it again. It's like, no, nah. yeah. it's like sure, you do your sure. best with what you got. And that helps take a lot of the stress. I tell myself, look, nobody's life is at risk with this podcast. You know, if it goes great, great. If not, then we'll do it again next week. Yeah. What you've learned from podcasting in two years informed what you're doing now, being two months in a new location, working with new people. Yeah, I think that, you know, now when I meet people, I'm always kind of thinking about the backstory behind how they got to where they are. Um, I feel that it helps me meet people and Mm -hmm. have discussions about just whatever topic it may be better. I feel that it's helped me be a better speaker. It helps me with processing things. You know, it's so many steps and remaining organized. Now I know, hey, I'm a sports medicine physician. Football season is my busy time. So I try to do more interviews in this time of the season because I know September, October are going to be really busy for me. So I feel that skills learned in podcasting um, just continues to help in daily life. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's awesome. I, I heard it said that if you want something done, give it to someone that's busy or someone that's occupied because they always have a way of just getting it done because they have an idea of what they need done, what they have on their plate and where to put new things that come into play. Yeah, I agree. And I feel one thing, and another lesson learned from podcasting is the marketing and branding of mm-hmm. your podcast, which is truly yourself. So at one point in my career, I always relied on whatever company or organization I was with to brand me or to podcast me. But now I realize that I am the brand truly. And mm-hmm. no matter what job I'm on, I'm still, you know, Derek L. Burgess, MD, the sports doctor, that's mm-hmm. going to be me in whatever city or state I'm in. So that allows me to promote myself as well. That's awesome. I like that. Is that something that came quickly or it kind of unfolded over the 15 years over the podcasting time to where you're like, oh, this is me. I'm not just like rehearsing. I'm not repeating what I rehearsed, but I've actually lived this and this is my identity. There's more to just like what you see, but I'm comfortable in my own skin now. Yeah, I I definitely feel like 
the podcast was a large part of that growth and hearing stories and sharing stories. And, you know, the more that I'm interviewed, the more that I relate more self, more to myself, mm -hmm. uh, because as I start to hear these stories, as I say them out loud, it allows me to realize that, you know, I'm not, I'm a unique individual. There's no other Derek Burgess MDs out there. And if they they are the same name, they're not the same person. So being a, my authentic self, I feel, you know, getting behind this microphone week in and week out, I learn more about myself. That's awesome. And I know you mentioned you do your recordings live and at least being able to take away that stress to another level to just be like, hey, one take, you go through it and then that's it. You don't have to go back and like clip this, clip that. It's like, no, nope, just put it out. Yeah, that was actually a goal of mine during my second year. I did definitely didn't do that in the beginning mm -hmm. um, because it's more paralyzed by the thought of making a mistake. But as I evolved to do that, I think I did my first live interview on someone else's show. And I was like, hmm, that wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. Plus the fact that it's done. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, that gave me the courage to do it on my own podcast as well. That's awesome. And do you have any favorites that you follow or anything that you, you like to listen to? Yeah, so I listen to a lot of podcasts about mindset, um, also about real estate. So Jonathan Jones, as you mentioned, he has several podcasts now. One of my first podcast mentors was Dr. Nee Darko uh, with Docs Outside the Box, where he's talking about physicians who do things other than just go and practice. So he mm -hmm. talks about the business of medicine. He talks about being an entrepreneur. Um, and then, of course, some of the other podcasts, Inky Johnson, I like his podcast with talking about mindset and Dr. Eric Thomas, I'm a fan mm -hmm. of his podcast. And then, you know, I listen to a lot of other podcasts, but probably not as routine. Yeah, I definitely rock with uh, Inky. I, yeah. From time to time, I, I'll look at his Instagram and the is it serendipity serendipity podcast, podcast. Yep. yeah and a lot a lot of those messages just kind of stand out to me to where i'm like okay i can reflect on this and save it for later or just come back or even if i'm scrolling i can be like oh yeah that that's a word right there yeah kind of like a happy marriage when i saw him doing the pivot podcast and they were kind of going back and forth between the four of them and i was like that's good synergy yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think it's one, it's something to the synergy of having other hosts, which is something that I've also thought about as well, is probably easier in a way, because mm -hmm. you're not just relying on yourself, but also one thing with me is the scheduling of that, which could be a little more difficult, but I definitely think that there's something to having other people in that live conversation that helps build, you know, something that you, it's hard to generate on your own. Right, right, for sure. And I think I've maybe done, as of yesterday, maybe I've only done two interviews where it's had three people in it. And mm -hmm. initially, I was like, wait, how am I going to balance this? But to your point, it helps if you have someone else there that you can bounce an idea off. And I guess it's like you're passing the ball around. If you're, if you're playing catch, you know, okay, I throw it to you, he throws it to me, he throws it to this person. And like, as long as you stay engaged, it, it continues the flow. Yeah, I agree. That's awesome. And what's 2023 been like for you this year? So as I mentioned, you know, new job, new location. It's a lot of change. So, but I, overall, I feel it's, it's a lot of growth as well. Um, and it's learning to adapt to new situations. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been, I've been blessed during the year. And what do you do to get yourself focused because it's like you're responsible for your your personal family you're responsible for your patients like what do you do to take care of yourself first yeah so i try to have good daily routines of working out um, doing affirmations doing my um, bible studies and things of that nature to keep me grounded uh, mm -hmm. and to keep me focused because if i'm not if my mind is everywhere then it's hard to be focused and you know if you're not during busy seasons is the easiest time to let those things slip away. And how can people get in, in touch with you or how can they follow your podcast and just continue to watch your journey unveil? Sure. sure. So as mentioned here, time out with the sports doctor podcast is available on all different platforms. I'm also on Instagram and Facebook at Dr. Derek, the sports doctor. Um, I have a website, Dr. Derek, the sports doctor.com. Uh, where you can find all of my content, um, where you can actually connect with me via voicemail or sending me a message. 
Um, but yeah, that's where I am. And, you know, if you ever are in the same space, I'm always interested to meet people face to face, especially after having conversations like this. Awesome. Where are you located? So I'm in uh, right outside of Jackson, Mississippi. Okay, nice. I guess, well, not to keep you long, and I was going to say, if you have any questions for me, feel free to ask, but with Jackson, Mississippi recently being highlighted with Deion Sanders being there recently and him moving out to Colorado, have you seen a change in that area? Or well, is it no, too soon so, to tell being recent to the area? Sure. So I feel, you know, I, I'm a, the team physician for Jackson State University. So I had a front row seat uh, with Coach Prime and Jackson State football. Coach T.C. Taylor was on that staff. And I feel that he's kept a lot of the momentum, but, you know, he's a coach and waiting for a long period of time. And he mm-hmm. is a coach and he's doing a great go- job with the, the athletes now. So I don't expect a, a big letdown from mm-hmm. the grade of football that people have learned to love from Jackson mm-hmm. State. You know, Jackson State has a rich culture in football. They put, I believe, 100 athletes into the NFL. And, you know, at one time back in the 70s, late 70s and 80s, they were putting, having multiple players drafted each year. So I feel that there's a rich culture. There was a lot of momentum game at Jackson State during the Coach Prime era, but I continue to see that um, even now during the coaching change. That's awesome to hear. I, I really like to hear that because it's people, I guess, I've learned how to tune out the noise, so to speak, or like the volume of what people say online, because it's like a big move happens or something and people go automatically to the negative because it's the more attractive thing. But it's good to see that with what was started, it continues to evolve. And there's a kindling of the flames there that that's continuing to burn. Yeah, I mean, truly, that's the nature of college sports. I mean, it's very rare that athletes are going to be recruited by and play for the same coach throughout their career. Many times they might have multiple coaches during a career. Mm-hmm. Um, so I feel like this, that's where we are now in college sports. So it's not something that's isolated to this situation. This is something that's happening across the sports realm. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. And I'd like to ask you this last question from the okay. first question that I asked you. Are you still who you said you were? From the first question of beginning of the interview? Yeah, Mm -hmm. I I believe so. I feel the same way. Awesome. I like it. Thank you very much, Dr. Burgess. Pleasure to have this interview with you. Hey, thank you for having me on. You're very welcome. Thank you for continuing to support this podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, then please leave a five-star review. And if you haven't done so, subscribe so you continue to get the updated episodes. Until later, peace. With the sports doc, uh-huh. keep our head right in the game. We ain't never stopping. You are now tuned in. Trust you don't want to miss. This is where life, sports, and medicine.